The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to University Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. Before we begin, we have just a couple of announcements. This evening at 5.30 is our Celtic service, a service of prayer and contemplation, a service of communion, and we invite you to join us online for that service at 5.30 this evening. In addition, November 1st is All Saints Sunday, and we will celebrate this Sunday as is our tradition by reading the names of those who have gone before us. So if you would like us to remember a loved one of yours who has passed away in the last year or so, please send that name into the church office so that we can make sure to remember and read that name as we celebrate our saints on November 1st. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. I invite all the children to gather around. Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you this morning. Um, I want to talk about something that I do all the time, which is lose things. I lose my glasses. I'm lucky to have them on my face right now. I lose this thing a lot more than I should. I often am late places because I've lost my keys. In fact, I don't even have them in my pocket right now, so I'll hope that they're in my office. But today, Gina is going to read us a story uh, about a sheep that gets lost and about, some, uh, about the shepherd who goes in search of that, even though 99 of the sheep that the shepherd has are safe at home uh, where they should be. There's one that gets lost, and the shepherd's going to go searching for it. And he searches for it uh, and worries about it, not because he doesn't worry about the other 99, but because that one, just like the others, is of value to him. And we go searching for things that we lose all the time because they're important to us. And when we're lost, we want somebody to come search for us as well. Uh, that shows that we're important to them. And so this week, I, I encourage you, if, if you feel lost, or if you see that somebody is lost, somebody in the group is not there who should be, uh, if something's going on and somebody is feeling left out, or uh, that you go and search for them, bring them back into the group, uh, and bring everybody back and show them that they mean something to you and that they are important to you. And likewise, if you're feeling lost, uh, if you get lost, I want you to know that there's always people, your brothers and sisters, your friends, your moms and dads, everybody here at University Baptist is always going to be searching for you, inviting you back in to the fold, inviting you back into the group, because we want you to be a part of this and you matter to us. You're important to us. You have value. Everyone here does, and we want everyone to be with us wherever we are. So search for those folks that are missing. If you're lost, know that we're looking for you. Um, and I hope that right now you'll join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for looking out for us when we lose our way. Thank you for uh, giving us the strength and the courage to go looking for those who are important to us, uh, who aren't around us, who have gotten lost. Help us to always remember that we're all valuable, that we're all important, that we all matter, uh, to you and to each other, and that you are always out there looking out for us and caring for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
join me for the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. God's faithful, God's faithful love, love lasts, lasts forever. Let Israel say it. God's, God's faithful, faithful love, love lasts forever. Let the house of Aaron say it. God's faithful love lasts forever. Let those who honor the Lord say it. God's faithful love lasts forever. Please bow with me for the invocation. Dear Father, thank you for this sacred time when we join our hearts and minds in worship of you. A time to draw together as your church to minister to each other, to remind each other that we are here on this earth for a purpose, that our lives are worthwhile, and that you value each of us as an individual as well as a collective church community. Lord, many of us are in a constant state of worry and anxiety. We pray that you will lift these feelings and instill in our minds tranquility and peace. We feel a sense of helplessness in our circumstances. So we pray for faith to trust your ability to work out all things to our benefit. We pray for courage, guidance, and discernment as we navigate the journey before us. We thank you, our Lord, for blessing us with a loving church family. And we pray that you will build this community to serve you by serving others. In Jesus' name, amen. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the New International Version. The Parables of the Lost Sheep and the Lost Coin. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this, what, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
worthy God and now is the time where we come to uh, you and we come to the time in this worship service where we reflect upon all the many ways that God has blessed us the many ways that God has given us the ability to do good in the world uh, with the resources with the gifts the talents whatever we have at our disposal and so as Taylor and Lay play for us and sing for us, I encourage you to take this time to think about what you have to share uh, with the world, with University Baptist Church, uh, with your community, to use what you have uh, to help all those around you. Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus chapter 32. I'll be reading verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. 
As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it. And said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts gathered now be pleasing to you our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We keep a piece of the desert in our godly playroom. So many important scriptural stories take place in the desert that we need to know what it's like. And one of my favorite parts about godly play is how the stories stay with the children and become incorporated into their lives. A few years ago, one of the children from the class asked her dad, Dad, do you want to meet God? Not quite knowing where this was going, he said, Yes, I, I do want to meet God. She told him, you have to go to the desert. The desert is, after all, where Abram and Sarai learn that God is not just at home, but in our wanderings, and where the stars are impossible to count. It's where the Israelites encounter an expansive freedom after years of slavery in Egypt, and it is where dependency on God is absolutely necessary. It is where God led the people by fire and smoke and met them atop a mountain. The desert is dangerous and dooming, freeing and forgiving, wild and wonderfully unknown. It is where one feels her own frail humanity, chases after mirages, searches and cries out for salvation. 
we find ourselves in the desert again this morning with a people who fear they are alone and a people who are desperate to create comfort. Moses has been on the mountain talking with God for 40 days and the people have waited. But as our scriptures tell us, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, they grew restless. They became afraid and they began to panic. Will he come back? What will happen to us? Who will lead us? Will we be stuck here forever? And they tell Aaron, their priest, we have to do something. Moses has disappeared atop this mountain and left us stranded in the wilderness without a plan, without a leader, without a God. We need hope. We need security. We need a God. Do something. Make gods for us. Gods who will lead us and be here with us. Make gods we can see and touch and be assured of. Make gods we don't have to wait for. Gods we can keep our eyes on. Gods we can control. And Aaron does. He tells the people to gather all their gold so he can create a great golden God for them. But what I find more interesting here is what Aaron doesn't do. And I think there's a word here for all us pastors and leaders, not just then, but now. You see, Aaron doesn't listen and consider and take time to pray. Aaron doesn't bring the people's fears and frustrations, desires and demands to God. Aaron doesn't challenge the people's false narrative or calm their fears. He doesn't ask why or remind them of who got them to where they are. He doesn't correct their notion that Moses led them to this mountain rather than God. He doesn't lead them in worship to the God who saved them or sing the songs of their liberation. He doesn't give them hope or encourage their trust. He doesn't tell them they already have a God or encourage them to call on the one who gave Aaron his priestly role. He doesn't do any of the things he should do. But he does everything the people ask of him and more. The people give up on the God who freed them and fashioned their own. But God hears what is happening at the bottom of the mountain. And this is a word for us today, too. Us who are living in our own desert time those who aren't sure where God has gone or if God can even hear us anymore. Those of us who are looking around for something, anything to hold on to, anything to give us hope. God hears you. Just like God heard the cries of Ishmael and the cries of the Israelites before you. And God is still here. God is still present, still listening, still working, even when you can't see or hear God. While God is speaking with Moses, planning for the people's future, building a new foundation, God hears the commotion at the bottom of the mountain, and the reaction is not good. Verse 7 tells us, the Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and that I may consume them. In his anger, God tells Moses what to do. But I find it much more interesting what Moses doesn't do. Moses doesn't go. Moses doesn't obey. Moses won't leave God alone. The rabbis work to explain Moses' choice here. One takes God's words, go down at once, 
to be less than literal, to be rather a call to conversation like, by way of rebuke, the Holy One said to Moses, this is a downgrading for you. Another explains Moses' immovable stance as one frozen in fear or distress. Yet another speaks of possibility unfolding and offers this parable. A parable of a king who became angry at his son and brought him into a chamber for punishment. There, as he began preparing himself to beat his son, the king kept shouting loudly, Let me alone that I may beat him! So loudly that he could be heard outside of the chamber. The son's tutor, standing in the reception room, said to himself, The king and the son are alone inside the chamber. Why does the king keep shouting, Let me alone? Unless... He wants me to come in and plead on behalf of his son. That is why he keeps shouting, let me alone. Likewise, when the Holy One said to Moses, now therefore let me alone, Moses reasoned, it is because the Holy One wants me to plead on behalf of the people. We can only imagine what caused Moses to speak in that moment, to stay where he was, to challenge his God, but he does. And before God ever tells Moses the character of God, two chapters prior to God passing before Moses proclaiming who God is, Moses calls on God to remember his promises and prove his person. Moses pleads, remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel. Remember how you swore to them by your very own self. Remember how you told them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. I will give this land to your family. Remember how you promised they shall inherit it forever. You, God, are a God of steadfast love who keeps your promises. Remember how you brought their descendants out of slavery, out of oppression, out of a culture of fear, of never-ending work and false worship. Remember how you saved them, how you had mercy on them, and Lord, have mercy on them now. You are a liberating God, faithful and full of mercy. Do not give those who hurt us reason to think otherwise. God tells Moses what he will do, but I'm much more interested in what God doesn't do and what this tells us about who our God is. God tells Moses, let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against the people and I may consume them. But God doesn't. And God doesn't push Moses away or shut Moses up either. God doesn't go ahead without listening or without loving. Moses calls on God, don't break your promises, and God doesn't. Moses cries, don't destroy your people, and God doesn't. Moses argues, don't let Egypt win, and God doesn't. Moses pleads with God to change God's mind, and God does. In all that God does and doesn't do in this story, we get to know God more, and not just the God of then, but the God of now. God, who is serious about relationship with God's people. God, who is moved by our pleads and our prayers. God whose promise does not change, but whose mind may. God who meets us in our captivity and frees us in our wilderness and leads us in our disbelief and loves us. In only two chapters, 
Moses will meet God atop the mountain again. God will pass before Moses and declare who God is. The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. But we already knew that. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, there are many images, many pictures we have in our minds of you and where you are, where we can find you. We're reminded today that where we find you most often isn't in the shiny or carefully molded or curated moments of our lives or of the stories in our scriptures, but rather in the wilderness and in the desert and in the dark nights where we aren't sure uh, of what might happen next. So today, if we find ourselves there in those places, in the wilderness, in the desert, in the darkness, of our lives, let us find you there. Let us find your light shining there in the midst of it all. Let us find you and let us follow you out of this time and into the places where you are uh, leading us. And if we find ourselves today looking for you instead in the more sterile or comfortable or curated parts of our lives. We pray that you would wake us up, that you'd get us out, that you'd send us out into the wilderness or into the desert, into the places where we can clearly hear your voice and clearly follow your lead. And what you do and don't do Wherever we find you, let us see that you are constantly calling us and keeping us close to you so that we can more easily follow in your footsteps. And now, 
we follow in your footsteps, praying the prayer we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please join me in the commission and blessing. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. We hope that you will continue to join us. And if you're able to come and join us outside on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., if you'd like to know more about UBC or contact Brett or me, uh, please check out our website, ubchm.org. We invite you into conversation with us and into this walk of faith alongside us. And now hear this benediction. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into these doors.